Don Ward has been following the story all morning long, and he joins us live from Springdale. Don, what more can you tell us out there? Well, first of all, Michelle, those 911 calls we just heard certainly tell the story of fear from the point of view of the witnesses on the ground. Now imagine what it must have been like for that pilot to know that the traffic was busy along 275, busier than it is now. He had very little time and very little space to bring that chopper down safely. Basically, a grass median between two very busy lanes of traffic. He and the reporter were in the middle of their morning rush hour routine, about to do a live traffic update for the radio at about 7.40 this morning when something went wrong. From in the air to on the ground in a matter of a few terrifying seconds, the news chopper badly damaged, its two occupants remarkably unhurt. Traffic reporter Dave Armbruster had the controls when the trouble started. I felt a little bit of a knock, uh, not a little knock, a, a hard vibration. He takes over, I say a word you can't really use on the air. And, um, you know, he's talking to another pilot, we're going down, we're going down. We're in the worst place in the world. That's pilot Rodney Newsom. His task with no engine power was to bring the Enstrom 280FX to the ground to avoid the interstate and all the cars. We really couldn't get over to a baseball field or anything else. It was, this was the only choice. Edna Pointer saw it and heard it from her nearby front yard. I saw the helicopter going over and it was started sputtering and jerking. And it sounded like the motor was going to cut off. It could have been much, much worse. Uh, if they had struck trees, power lines, uh, a vehicle on the interstate, or came down at a different angle into the ground, or if the helicopter would have caught on fire. What was going through your mind as you're coming down? Uh, saving our lives. That's it. In pieces, the helicopter is taken away, and the investigation into what happened will begin. Now, the two on board that helicopter aren't the only lucky ones. In spite of the fact that dozens of people witnessed this drama unfold through their windshields, there were no serious crashes reported among the cars with onlookers on the ground, just one minor fender bender. And you know, when you make your living flying in a helicopter every day, this is something, this possibility is always in the back of your mind, but they rely very heavily on the reliability of their equipment and on the skills of the pilot. And this morning, the skills of pilot Rodney Newsom were put to the test, and he passed. Live along I-275, Don Ward, WLWT Eyewitness News 5. Take a drive through Hamilton and chances are you'll cross a railroad track. And chances are you'll have to slow way down to do it. Some of the railroad crossings on Hamilton streets are in such a state of disrepair that cars get damaged and folks are worried the problems will just get worse. WLWT Eyewitness News 5's Don Ward joins us live from Hamilton tonight. And Don, you got a first-hand look at some of those rough crossings. Right, Lisa, this is one of the rough spots. Multiple tracks here where they cross a street called Bell Avenue. And as you can see, any time a car comes through here, its driver had better slow down or face the possibility of bouncing around, maybe even bottoming out. And it's not just here. It's all over the city. <laughs> Hamilton is crisscrossed by railroad tracks. Fine for the trains. Another story for the cars. Like a roller coaster. Well, it kind of goes like... <laughs> Now, I've torn up a couple of cars going across the railroad track. Tom Nye agrees it's a big problem. He's Hamilton's vice mayor. Right up the street here uh, on Dayton Street. It's tough. Heaton Street right around the way. Walnut Street, Main Street, it's tough. We probably have about six that are very challenging to cross. Here's his dilemma. The property all belongs to CSX. The repairs are their responsibility. But a lot of drivers don't know that. We are frustrated because most people believe that, gosh, the city's not out there doing their job. <laughs> I didn't know that. I thought it was the city. Another concern, there could be more than just car trouble here. It's not just the pavement and the foundation around it. The rails are in difficult shape, too. I just hope we don't have to wait till a train derailment uh, before CSX comes out and decides, gosh, that was a bad crossing. Now it's time to do something. CSX has promised to fix the trouble spots sometime this fall once they get other higher priority repairs on track. Allegedly, there are some around the state that are even worse than these. I would hate to see what some of those are. Now, the vice mayor, Tom Nye, tells me that if the repairs don't happen, as promised this fall, he might take his case to the state uh, public utilities commission. They might have a little more influence when it comes to telling CSX to get out here and do something. And by the way, this one here at Bell Avenue, this rubber matting was just put in, we're told, about a year ago in an attempt to fix the uh, rough crossing here. From what we hear from the drivers, Lisa, it hasn't done a whole lot to help. Live in Hamilton, I'm Don Ward, WLWT Eyewitness News 5. The police officer who was killed overnight dragged 
to his death in this area. With us back to the camera is uh, Lieutenant Ray Ruberg. He's the public information officer for the Cincinnati Police. He's been handling the information as it's passed to the media this morning, but it looks like with the presence we have there now of the police chief, the news conference may be just moments away. We will try to have that for you live if and when it happens anytime soon. First, though, we want to uh, get a check of the weather situation this morning. Let's do that with uh, Todd Warren, who's in now with the latest on that. And now, the suspect wound up dragging the officer with that car to Colerain and North Bend. Fellow officers then found the suspect on Bahama Terrace. Eyewitness News 5's Monica Adler has been live on the scene all morning long. Monica, you've been uh, getting updates from the police chief, from the uh, police department spokesperson. And uh, what have you got for us now? Well, Don, the most tragic of the details that the officer died here at Well WT, Eyewitness News 5. And Monica, as you've been out there this morning among the police officers, um, some details have begun to emerge about this, this officer who'd only been with the uh, police division since July of 1996, but already it seems like he'd made a big impact on, uh, on the community and on his colleagues. A very exemplary officer, Don, he of police officers. All right, a difficult morning for everyone involved. Thank you very much, Monica Adler. Live this morning at the uh, scene where a Cincinnati police officer was dragged to his death in the line of duty. We'll have details from Monica just a little bit later on. And we have been getting details. This is Eyewitness News 5 Today. Hello, everyone. Good Sunday morning to you and a rough Sunday morning weather-wise. We've had some storms move into the area. Strong thunderstorms moving quickly across the tri-state. Take a look at some of the lightning captured by our city cam just about 6 o'clock this morning as the storm swept through downtown Cincinnati. These shots have been edited together, but it gives you some idea of what the storm was like. Meteorologist John James is tracking the system. We'll go to him right now. Good morning, John. Good morning, Don. Yes, a very violent morning. Your five day coming up in about 15 minutes. Don. All right, thanks, John. First, though, some trouble to tell you about on a tri-state highway. An early morning accident on eastbound I-74 has shut down the interstate. Now, the accident happened right at the Route 128 mark about 5.30. Whitewater Township dispatchers say an officer is injured, and they believe the accident was the result of a police pursuit. Two cars were apparently involved, and we'll keep you updated as soon as we hear the latest. Again, I-74 eastbound shut down at this time. And you might notice today some of Cincinnati schools look just a bit cleaner on the outside. That's because volunteers spent part of their day sprucing things up. At Fairview Elementary in Clifton Heights, parents, students, the principal, and teachers helped pick up trash and mulch the green space around their school. Volunteers at three other Cincinnati public schools did everything from painting and trimming to repairing playground equipment. And the first day of that new school year is coming up on Tuesday. And if you're the parent of a school-aged child, your head may still be spinning from all that back-to-school shopping you've had to do. Preparing your child for a new year can teach you some tough lessons in finance and making the most of a buck. Eyewitness News 5's Monica Abler tells us about a woman with nearly a dozen grandchildren and the special help she's had getting them ready for school. Eyewitness News 5. The Police Athletic Association is able to fund projects like the back-to-school shopping trips because they get donations from the community. There are a lot of reasons why some people don't finish high school. Yeah, and a lot of reasons why many of them go back to get their GED. WLWT Eyewitness News 5's Don Ward has a story of one man and his reasons for both. It's cap and gown and picture day for 170 GED students from Newport Adult Education Center. A major accomplishment, most of them not too far removed from high school age. There's a job fair here too to help the new graduates find employment. But to illustrate the point that it's never too late, we go to Alexandria, Kentucky, to meet a man who should have graduated more than five decades ago until Uncle Sam stepped in. I uh, felt there was something lacking and I had to go and fulfill it. When Howard or Pat Fahey was just a teen, the U.S. was drawn into World War II. He knew he might have to fight. He didn't know how soon it would happen. He turned 18 in July 1943, and by October, he was Private Fahey, U.S. Army, Signal Corps. Private Fahey never had a chance to finish high school. I did feel cheated. So about a year ago, he started the program that would get him that overdue diploma, doing what he hadn't done in a long time. This was awful hard for me. I mean, 56 years since I'd been in school. Pat and his wife Evelyn just celebrated their 50th anniversary. She knew how badly he wanted the GED, and she made sure he stuck with it. I pushed him. I was a pusher. It worked. Not only did he get that Newport diploma, but his alma mater, Purcell High School, gave him a leather-bound diploma, too, marked 1944, the year he should have graduated. 
At 74 years old, Pat doesn't need a job, but he did need to finish what he started before the war changed his life. He did need that piece of paper that declared him a graduate. And now at 74, Private Fahey has it. Don Ward, WLWT Eyewitness News 5. Good job, Private Fahey. And you know he did so well in school that he's in the National Adult Education Honor Society. That happens to fewer than 3% of adult students nationwide. Wow. The best story of the night. Yeah.